Good morning, everybody, and I'm back in the camper for what I hope will be a short episode today. Last summer, I upgraded the batteries to lithium iron phosphate, added more solar panels on the roof, a bigger charge controller, an inverter, and a transfer switch. So now we can run a small portable air conditioner for a few hours when off-grid or boondocking. But when we're not in the camper, I want to keep it cool and ventilated. And to do that, I'll need a thermostat-controlled fan that will click on when it gets hot inside. Unfortunately, this RV didn't come with one of those, so today I'm going to modify the existing fan and add this automotive radiator thermostat. Well, that's the plan anyway. The fan that was already installed has a manual crank for opening and closing, a switch that turns the fan on, and three speed settings, and that's it. And there's an override switch that turns it off when the vent is closed. On the roof, there's a rain cover so it can be left open and vented, um, when we're not traveling anyways. This thermostat is designed to turn on an automotive radiator fan when the coolant temperature reaches a set temperature on the dial. And the probe is meant to be installed somehow inside the radiator and immersed in the coolant. There's three connector tabs on the unit and I plan to wire it in line on the power wire between the existing speed selector and the lid power cutoff. With an electrical meter, I can turn the dial to the continuity setting and touch the probes to the tabs on the right. With the thermostat dial turned to minimum, there's no connection. But when the dial is turned beyond the current temperature in this space, then the meter turns to 1 and the connection is made and then the fan will turn on. And this thermostat can handle the current the fan will draw. That's the main reason I chose a radiator cooling thermostat. So I wouldn't need to trigger a relay with a lower amperage thermostat. I'm not an electrician, but that's what I understand. And you can pick these up on Amazon for about 20 bucks or so. Link up here in the description. Which is way cheaper than replacing the fan with a model that has a thermostat built in. I'd like to mount the thermostat dial in the corner across from the speed dial, but it may not fit, so I might need to install it on the side of the plastic housing. So let's get this housing off and see what we have room for. So I was looking through the footage I shot in the camper and I don't think I did the best job at explaining how I have this thermostat wired in. So I'm in my workshop. I've got a 12 volt battery, the thermostat and a small fan and a heat gun to do this demonstration. So I have from the battery a wire from the positive and it's going into the C connection on the thermostat. And out of the thermostat, it's connection number two, and that is the positive. I have it running through this little 12 volt to 5 volt uh, converter uh, for this fan, because this is a USB fan, but it's good enough for the demonstration. And then returning from the fan, the negative goes to the negative terminal of the battery. Um, it's about uh, uh, 67 degrees Fahrenheit or 19 degrees Celsius in this room. I have the thermostat set to 30 degrees Celsius or 86 degrees Fahrenheit and with the heat gun I'll apply some heat to the probe. Okay so the fan just kicked on but in the camper the fan would be cooling the entire space of the RV not just cooling down the probe as it is in this demonstration. And it's off. So it's cooled the probe down below 86 degrees Fahrenheit. So I think that's a little bit better um, explanation of how I have this wired together. There's four screws that hold the vent trim ring in place. With that removed, I can see the positive and negative wires that supply power to the vent fan. Then there's a screw holding the lid crank handle on its shaft. And the speed selector dial can then be pulled off. And I think... Followed by a 4 amp fuse. Then a few more screws to remove the frame and screen. And it's light enough to hang from the wires without damaging them. Let's have another look at what we have here. All right, so to remove this housing, 
I've got a uh, positive connection here on the speed controller and then I can disconnect uh, the negative or the uh, other positive that goes to uh, the fuse and there's some bits of silicone here holding the wires in place and then up here this goes to the switch that turns it off when the lid closes so I'll have to disconnect uh, uh, these wires so I can free up the housing and then drill some holes in, uh, in this to install the thermostat. Now with the housing off, I can take the thermostat dial off and then there's a little face plate here. And then this is going to sit in somewhere, somewhere here, maybe on an angle like that, something like maybe at a 45. So it just stands off of there and stands off of this screw, something like that, I think might work. So I'll mark that, drill some holes, and then I'll mount that in place and then get the wires ready. I used a piece of 2x3 lumber under the plastic to support it while drilling these holes. I don't recall the exact sizes of the two bits I used, but it's not crucial, as the screws and dial hide everything. These two screws run through the flange, or bezel I think it's called, and into the thermostat. Then the dial can go back on. Right on. Okay, so I've got the probe here and the wire to it. And got some tape on that. I cleaned this with a bit of mineral spirits and I'm going to use some hot melt to kind of hold it in place starting up here at this end and just working my way along here kind of putting it into place. And uh, I'd like to thank Marilyn for her pink silicone mat here. I don't do any damage. So the hot melt has cooled and looks like everything's in uh, good shape there. Now for the wiring, I need the four. Power to the fan, the red line, used to be right on here. But before I get to the fan, we need to run through the new thermostat. So I need a wire that's going to go around here. It's going to connect into that. And it's going to run to the thermostat there. And then I need another one coming out of the thermostat that's going to tie into the wire that used to sit in there, the red one that's up above my head here. So I've got uh, some automotive wire. I strip those and I need another one here that's going to be going into that tab. In the blue. So then that one's going to go into there. And then this one's going to go up and connect into the red. So somewhere about this length here. Cut a piece. And then uh, 
strip it. Oop. Crimp. And then we'll shrink. All right, got my wires in place there. Just a little uh, hot melt to hold them in place here. Okay. Okay, looks like I have everything ready to go back into place here. So I just need to uh, have my screwdriver and screws ready. So I have to hold this up at the same time. I'll start with my uh, connection here to the fan and then connect my, to the power. Now, if I turn the fan on, And then set my thermostat. Oh, I don't have my fuse in. That's why. Okay, hold on a minute. I'll put the fuse back in. Okay, fuse is in. Power's on. Looks like it works. All right, and it should stay on until it cools down and drops below that temperature. All right, now I can see if I can get these wires in here without anything getting in the way of anything else. So I'll stuff some of these back into here. Start again. Set the temperature. There we go. Alright. And I can still override and shut it off and leave the temperature the way I like it. Okay, now. That's done. Thermostat added. All right, and that's done. Thanks very much for watching, and we'll see you next time.